going to be about everything that happened after our transfer on December 5th, 2017, um, kind of up until now. Um, we've had just some little things happen in between there. I've mentioned January a few times in my previous videos. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and then this is just going to kind of be a catch up um, so we can get to this point. And then I'll let you kind of know what's going on from here. So December 5th, um, we did the transfer. We did one embryo. And December 14th, we had a confirmed pregnancy test with a positive HCG blood work. Two days later, we had another one to make sure my numbers were doubling correctly, and they were. And on December 28th, we were able to have an ultrasound, and W and J were able to attend that. I was six weeks exactly. We were able to get a couple of pictures of baby um, at six weeks. There's not a whole lot of definition there. Um, but we were also able to confirm a heartbeat at 106 beats per minute. And I do have a couple of ultrasounds from that that I'll include. Um, so from there, we kind of, I stopped really going to the fertility clinic. Um, we confirmed heartbeat, blood work looked good, my levels looked good, and then my estrogen and progesterone levels stayed good. So it wasn't really necessary. <clears throat> so the next step after that was to just start seeing a regular OB provider. On January 1st, I was sitting at home, um, relaxing. I was playing a video game on my computer, and my husband was playing video games downstairs. I started to have a little bit of cramping, um, but I, you know, I thought maybe I had to go to the bathroom or didn't really think that it was anything um, until it continued to get worse and it would come and go. I got to the point I went downstairs finally and told my husband that I was having cramping. Um, I wasn't going to go to a hospital. I didn't have bleeding right away, so I, I thought, you know, maybe if, as long as I wasn't bleeding, I thought it would be okay. Um, I went upstairs to run myself a bath and decided just to get in before it was ready. I needed to sit down. I needed to relax, and I started bleeding, and there was a lot of blood. Um, I decided to drive to the ER where I work because I figured if I was miscarrying, I wanted to be around people I felt comfortable with and people that understood our journey so far. Um, I got there, thankfully they weren't busy. I had called ahead to kind of, to make sure and to let them know that I was coming. Um, and like I said, I got there, thankfully they weren't busy. They got me um, right into a room. I was still bleeding. I couldn't imagine that I wasn't miscarrying at this point. I was having what I can only explain as contractions. They were timeable, they were strong, the pain was intense, um, and they were coming and going. And the bleeding just it was a ridiculous amount. One of my coworkers, she stayed with me the entire time, tried to encourage me, say maybe it's just a you know a hematoma, everything's okay, it's okay. I was a mess, I was crying. I was terrified. I couldn't imagine, like I said, that it wasn't a miscarriage. Um, so, um, being January 1st, on a holiday, they didn't have any ultrasound in-house, so we had to call ultrasound in, and I had to wait a little bit. Um, thankfully, I have wonderful coworkers, and they stayed with me, made sure I was okay. Um, I did get in connect, um, communication with my clinic, um, the surrogacy clinic, and talk with them, and let one of the girls know this is what's going on. She offered to come stay with me as well and just um, just told me, you know, let me know that they were there and that was wonderful too. I can't say enough good about the surrogacy clinic I'm associated with. They are truly wonderful people and they really, really care about their surrogates and about their intended parents. They're just, I can't say enough. Um, finally, ultrasound gets there. I go in, um, doing okay at this point. I was still upset but not crying. I talked with her a little bit. Again, I started crying, kind of lost it, and got down, got ready for the ultrasound, and I just didn't know what to prepare myself for. So um, she begins the ultrasound, and immediately there is fetal activity. Baby is moving a little bit. I didn't feel anything. I was just barely six weeks along, almost seven weeks at that point. Um, but it was super encouraging. I. I couldn't have been happier. I, but I was still nervous. 
I thought with this much bleeding, what is going on? We found what's called a subchorionic hematoma. It is a blood pocket between the placenta and the uterus. So it causes a small separation. And what my body was doing was contracting to push all of that blood out. So I was having contractions. The bleeding was coming from the hematoma. Um, and the irritation from the hematoma caused the contractions, which then caused my body to kind of rid itself of that blood. Um, I went back um, into the ER and sat there for a little bit longer while we waited and um, went home. I was told there was still a chance I could miscarry. I was early. There was no guarantees. I was optimistic. I thought, okay, I've had a hematoma. I had a hematoma with my second son. I didn't bleed. Um, and we didn't know until much later, but I thought, we can handle this. Um, about a week later, on January 6th, I think it was, I was at work. I was sitting in the ER working. Um, went back, sort of started cramping in a little bit more, not nearly as tense, as intense, um, and told my coworkers, um, we got a call that we had an ambulance coming in with a critical patient. Um, we had another person coming in. I decided to just kind of ignore it. I figured, you know, we don't have time to worry about this right now. Again, I'm not bleeding. It's okay. I stood up to leave the area where my um, friends were and immediately started gushing blood again. So I told them. I said, guys, I'm bleeding. They quickly, we, we called my boss. We found somebody to come sit for me. Um, got me back before our ambulances got in and got everything going. Um, I kind of just wanted to go home at that point. I figured it was just the hematoma. Again, I was contracting and again, I was bleeding quite a bit. Um, but they wanted to be sure, and, and I wanted to be sure too, I, but I thought with everything else going on, if it's a hematoma, there's nothing you can do. If, if I'm miscarrying, there's nothing we can do. Um, so we called ultrasound in and um, I went over to ultrasound again immediately we had fetal activity we could see the hematoma it had gotten a little bit bigger and I was bleeding again but everything was fine baby was fine so <clears throat> the doctor that was working did check my cervix after that incident and I was slightly dilated which increased the risk for miscarrying um, I think he said it was barely a fingertip at the time so it never anything that required any action and not anything um, to worry about but again it was a hematoma I was contracting and bleeding from the hematoma um, but I still felt okay I figured again you know what can we do about it at this point eventually hopefully it'll stop and it'll go away so from there um, I did end up going home I was on bed rest for a couple of days and then returned back to work I made an appointment with my regular OB, um, and I am doctoring with a facility that has a NICU just in case um, the parents requested that I, del I deliver somewhere with a NICU. Um, and I had my second son at this hospital, so I am okay with that. I'm excited for it. Um, we had wonderful care while we were there, and I you know, adore them. Um, this clinic uses um, a five doctor rotation, so you see every doctor during your pregnancy because if you go into labor, it's whoever's on call that will be delivering your baby. I'm having a scheduled C-section in August, so I can kind of pick my doctor. Like I said, they wanna do August 16th. I'm really gonna push for around the 23rd. I think the due date would be better um, to give her, you know, baby as much time as possible. I'm, unless something goes wrong, I don't see the need to go early. So I started seeing the regular OB and at, um, I think it was about 10 weeks is when I got in with them, maybe 11. They do an ultrasound to confirm viability and get a date for them. And then you just see a regular doctor. Um, we didn't do any genetic testing with this baby because they had done genetic testing um, to the embryo before it was frozen. So we didn't have to do the ultrasound or blood work at 11 weeks um, that I had had with my other son. And um, our doctor and our clinics both agreed that it really just wouldn't be necessary to do all the extra stuff if we had pretty much ruled all of that out at this point. So I didn't have another ultrasound again until I was 20 weeks pregnant and we did the anatomy scan and kind of from then till now it's it's been very uneventful. I've had no more bleeding, no more contractions, 
just a nice normal pregnancy um, so at 20 weeks we did the anatomy scan everything looked good um, the ultrasound tech couldn't be positive what baby was because baby was super active and just didn't want to show us so I think I know I have an echo tomorrow for baby um, it's common with IVF pregnancies to do a fetal echo IVF carries a little bit more risk for heart defects um, so we're you know just testing everything to be sure and I'm having I had the anatomy scan and I will have the echo at a high-risk clinic that's associated with my doctor's office um, so that a maternal fetal medicine doctor is there to kind of evaluate I think in live time I think he sees the ultrasound as it's happening um, so if anything is wrong anything looks funny immediately we get feedback on that and we're able to know right away um, and as long as everything looks good tomorrow um, we'll continue on normally like a normal pregnancy I have my glucose test coming up and my 28 week appointment and then after that we start going every two weeks um, and then we'll go weekly at 36 so we're getting there um, and if everything looks good then we won't have any um, scheduled ultrasounds from now on um, we I have talked with WNJ about possibly doing a 3d or 4d um, they're interested in one so we'll kind of talk about that um, my OB recommends doing that right around 26 28 weeks so we're um, kind of coming up on that I'll be 24 weeks tomorrow and um, let's see that's about it that's it for a baby um, I have had some issues um, I've had some cardiac issues and I'm gonna kind of do a video on that separately kind of what we've done at this point as far as cardiac and then I do have some future appointments coming up for that um, again it's not really anything I'm worried about not anything abnormal um, I did get a really interesting um, kind of diagnosis I suppose from my cardiologist a couple of weeks ago so I'm going to talk about that it does not affect the pregnancy it does not affect baby it doesn't really affect me um, it's just something really interesting and I think um, something that kind of goes undiagnosed more more often than not and it's extremely uncommon to be diagnosed at 25 years old so um, usually it's a diagnosis that you'll get at birth or shortly after so it's, it's interesting to see um, and like I said we're, I'll talk about this in a, my videos about my cardiac history um, it'll be interesting to see where in my childhood this got missed um, and then but at the same time the signs that I've had since I was a child so I think that's it for this one um, I think we're pretty well caught up and I will do another video um, on the fetal echo tomorrow um, I should hear something back right away um, I'll have some pictures to share and I'll share some pictures in this video from our anatomy scan uh, so I'm gonna do a Q&A a little bit later as well I um, there's some questions I get asked pretty frequently that I'm gonna kind of just address here that one shouldn't be a very long video um, but I'm gonna try to do that one today as well so we'll see you guys later